Okay, so thank you all for joining us tonight. I know it's a small and intimate crowd tonight, but I know everyone's stressed with the run up to Christmas and the holidays and all the terrors that entails. Um, I'm going to start by reading a piece by Amanda Lovelace. It's a very short one. And then we'll go straight on to Tim. So this one is called To Make Up for the Fact I'm Not. The only way I can remember what happened is if I sit down and pray to the paper and hope the pen is a believer. And I said, it's a very short one, but it is one of my favorites because I think it talks a lot about how poets interpret life and not just poets, songwriters, story writers, everyone, except Chris, because he's got not a poetic bone in his body. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. Uh, Tim, if you'd like to. Right. Oh. So uh, what I have spotter you ready oh my god right um <laughs> so what do i have uh, eight minutes eight to ten minutes tim eight to ten minutes god almighty that's unusual i'm usually doing three minutes um right okay i'll start off with one that i wrote two years ago um i don't know if people are familiar with the radical uh, psychoanalyst uh, rd lang uh, but he's definitely worth checking out. Uh, wrote some amazing uh, books um, regarding uh, new forms of therapy, uh, some of which are coming back. Uh, he was a pioneer of LSD therapy, um, which I notice is making a bit of a comeback. Um, but he also wrote a great uh, book called Knots, which was about the way that people's minds work particularly in relationships. And so this one's inspired by uh, D. Lang. It's called Love Knots. I love you. I hate you. I hate you. I love you. I hate you because I love you. I love my hate for you because you hate your love for me. I hate my hate for you because you love your love for me. You hate your hate for me because I love my love for you. You hate me because I love you. You love me because I hate you. You hate your love for me because it can hurt you and I hate my love for you for the same reason but not to be loved by you can hurt me too and not to be loved by me can hurt you too so I love hating you as much as you love hurting me and you love hurting me as much as I love hating you so I hurt you to see how much you love me and you hurt me to see how much I love you I love you I hate you I hate you I love you cheers that's the first one and um some uh some of them uh Give me a give me a yell when I've got like two minutes left. Yeah, we yell, can yells. <laughs> um, okay, this is this is like a more a more uh, recent one. Indeed, I wrote it yesterday, and it's called "Fuck Off 2020." Oh, I should have checked. Am I allowed to swear on this? You are encouraged to swear. I'm encouraged <laughs> to swear. Excellent. Good. Right. So, fuck off 2020. I'm really glad to see the arse end of this year, but to celebrate its passing is a tad premature. Until I get a feel for what the next one is like, I'll continue as paranoid, stressed and insecure. 
This shito is run by incompetent narcissists, not only malign, but hopeless too. It's a strange and a horrible combination, like Margaret Thatcher sniffing glue. And freaking America's got two presidents, what the Constitution says and what the Trumpists say. A man who can muse about jacking up bleach has got to be off his one horse open sleigh. I sometimes amuse myself having a guess about what kind of drugs these people are doing. Oh, Georgie Osborne was the best of the lot. His eyes out on stalks, his brain was getting a screwing. Now, bastardy Boris was your obvious cokehead, talking out of bollocks and grinning like a fool. Just lately, he looks like he's been hitting the downers. He's lost control of his bladder. He's starting to drool. And over all this is hanging the virus like a great black cloud that won't go away. While most of the world is run by people you wouldn't trust to run a pizza takeaway. And the Labour Party went and crucified Corbyn exposing themselves for the turds that they are. Traitors to the class, lying and defrauding while the PLP dines out on Almas caviar. Only revolution will get us out of this one. We said it before and it's surely true. The old world's dying, the new one can't be born. The time of monsters is overdue. So. Fuck off, 2020. Piss off and die. One of the shittiest years I can ever recall. But don't forget a reset back to normal because 2021 is set to give you a maul. So I'm really glad to see the answer this year. But in 2021, I want to see a bit of fight, not just in Paris, not just in Berlin, but in London too. Give the ruling class a fright. And that's that one. And how much time have I got? Uh, you could do one quick one if you've got a short one. One quick one, I've got a short one. Right. And God, I'll tell you what, finding a short one is the longest one. Okay. Um, this is a short one. It's uh, called From the River to the Sea, and it's for Palest Palestinians, all Palestinians. Intersection of many paths on the land and on the ocean, hang like dreams on broken glass, shattered by the night's explosions, misdirection and new codes, tear apart my heart's desire. Passports, checkpoints, bombed out roads, pouring petrol on the fire. And every time the war returns like a killer to his crime, houses bulldozed, orchards burned, offerings to a racist shrine, roads and borders intersect. And in this struggle, to be free, unbroken sunlight still reflects from the river to the sea. Okay, cheers, folks. Thanks for thanks for having me, and thanks for the uh, thanks for listening to the poems. Thank cheers. you very much, Tim. Uh, very powerful as always, uh, and I think we all, in particular, agreed with the middle one a very great deal. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Um, and now, uh, next up, Kath, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Cool, if you'd like to take it away. <laughs> okay, um, so I'll just do it like a really quick line check. So, um, you hear the piano, okay? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, um, so I thought I'd start with a Christmas carol, uh, get us all in the festive mood. <laughs> so, um, this is Silent Night. <clears throat> Enjoy. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm, I'm going to do a song of my own now. Um, <clears throat> I wrote this last week, actually. So I did a, I do monthly live streams uh, during lockdown, and I finished writing this in time for my last one, which is last week. And it's um, kind of about finding your finding your um, independence and kind of being your own person through difficult times. So uh, it's called Upside Down. <clears throat>
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. So that's that's all I'm going to play for tonight. Not wonderful as ever, Kat. <laughs> and um, I've got to admit, it's been a while since I heard you play. The last time was Bay Campus, I think. But That's right. down on Bay, Bay Campus. Campus. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was February 12th. I know. It feels a well, decade ago now. <laughs> it does. Um, but yeah, you get better every time. Thank you for oh, that. Thank Lovely. you, Sarah. Thank you for having me. Uh, next up, Lucy, are you ready? Yeah, over to Lucy. <laughs> yes, okay, hello. I'm probably reverse, so you probably can't see this properly, but I have a thing that says that 2020 everything sucks. Um, so I thought I should probably share that to everybody since I waited a million years for it to come from whichever website I brought it from. <laughs> um, and I will keep it forever as a memento of this terrible situation. Um, I have three poems because I hate odd numbers. They are potentially long um, because I thought I didn't have any poems uh, and it turns out I do. Um, right. I hope they're not too long. Um, one of them's new, but I'll read it at the end. Um, one of them's not mine. So sorry if I read it at the last one as well because I have barely any memory of <laughs> that week because I was concussed. Anyway, <laughs> um, this is a poem I wrote a very long time ago. Um, I haven't read it at a poetry evening in also a very long time. Um, although some of you have probably heard it before. Um, <clears throat> can you hear me okay? Yeah. Here you no, okay. I just wanted to check before I started. Right. Um, so this was called um, Inexorable. <clears throat> well, after all, why shouldn't I dare? She showed me pictures, an apple, a pear, enticing, appetizing, treacherous fruit. She swallowed the skin, spit the seed, the start, the root. My feet are caught, the roots expand, grow. Devil's snare, a trap, swallows me slow. The serpents hiss silently, singing a song. The snakes I have swallowed whole. They slither in my stomach and tear a hole. And the hole is a door, is a box wide open. Pandora's buried in the quicksand hoping. The lid will be shut, the feeling hidden. But I can't move at all, lest my gut be smitten. By one in armour made of steel and rust. She stares me dead in the eye, shielding her bust. Her breastplate, a strong silver placard. An extra layer that covers her, ah, covers her heart. Thanks. Um, okay, so the um, the next one, well, the next one's meant to be the ambition bird. Does this sound like something I read last time? Don't think so. Don't think last time. Then we will pretend that I haven't if I did. Um, if it rings a bell, well, you get to hear it again. <clears throat> um, okay. So I, this one definitely has some trigger warnings. Let me see if I can figure them all out. Um, right. Um, trigger warning, uh, suicide, suicidal tendencies, suicidal ideation, uh, death, de depictions of ways to die. That's it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so the, I haven't written this poem. Um, it's called The Ambition Bird by Anne Sexton. <clears throat> so it has come to this insomnia at 3.15 a.m. The clock tolling its engine like a frog following a sundial yet having an electric seizure at the quarter hour. The business of words keeps me awake. I am drinking cocoa, that warm brown mama. I would like a simple life, yet all night I am laying poems away in a long box. It is my mortality box, my layaway plan, my coffin. All night, dark wings, 
flopping in my heart, each an ambition bird. The bird wants to be dropped from a high place like the Talahachi Bridge. He wants to light a kitchen match and immolate himself. He wants to fly into the hand of Michelangelo and come out painted on a ceiling. He wants to pierce the hornet's nest and come out with a long godhead. He wants to take bread and wine and bring forth a man happily floating on the Caribbean. He wants to be pressed out like a key so he can unlock the magi. He wants to take leave among strangers, passing out bits of his heart like hors d'oeuvres. He wants to die, changing his clothes and bolt for the sun like a diamond. He wants, I want. Dear God, wouldn't it be good enough to just drink cocoa? I must get a new bird and a new immortality box. There is folly enough inside this one. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's one of my favorite poems ever. She did die, didn't she? She did die. And Sexton, yeah. It's beautiful. It really is. Thanks. Yeah, it's just it's just really lovely. And pe people who know me really well will know that I have a thing with birds. So, um, yeah, when I read that poem, I was like, oh, that is very relatable. What is the title of that again? Um, it's called The Ambition Bird. The Ambition Bird. Oh, I'll, I'll definitely look that one up. I didn't know it. Mm. Yes, Anne Sexton was a confessionalist uh, poet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all kinds of similar... Um, I remember reading her stuff in the 60s, yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. Yes, I probably but, need to read more of her stuff, to be honest, because I've read this one so many times that I now, um, I now remember it by heart, but I need to reread some of the other, the other stuff. The delivery of it was very powerful, very, very emotive. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I feel really strange doing poetry in front of myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, normally, like, I just sort of forget that I exist when I read a poem, um, yeah. so that's, that's a bit difficult <laughs> in this context, but alas. You did that. Uh, I have one more, yeah. but I'll try not to make it too long. Go for it. Um, it is a bit of a lengthy poem, but um, yeah, we'll see. I don't know how long it takes to read it, because I've literally never done it before, so All right. we'll see. I'm happy it's not more than a, mi a minute. It's probably going to be less. Okay, I'm just going to read it. <clears throat> okay, <sighs> sorry. Um, this was called Things That Steal. Um, right. I am surrounded by things that steal. Thieves of a life that used to be mine. My determined strides across the town centre, waiting for traffic lights to turn green. Impatiently, cigarette in hand, work plans carefully thought out. Those same steps carrying me to your door, now only echoes remain. I hear them from my bedroom, they bounce off the walls. Stolen sense of safety, sitting on your sofa, fears melting away. Now an iceberg in a frozen sea, my body temperature stays the same, ice cold, warmth taken away. I used to run to you when the vampires drained me. You'd warm up my insides, the blood would return to my veins. Again, I felt it in every inch of my tired body, the tender flesh, the slow breath, the fluttering eyelids. With finger trips, fingertips, I would trace the outline of my restorative bubble, pale skin and soft curls. I could close my eyes without invisible claws grabbing at my soul. For years I would hold a plate and cutlery with ease like fingers entwined, without the endless counting, the anchor that now keeps me afloat. Without it, the storm would carry me away. My open mouth would swallow the tempest, its sharp poison gusts. I would have no choice but to regurgitate, keeping its seal is damage control. Fastened to the seabed, is one still lost at sea? Thieves can't reach me here in the endless blue. Thank you. Beautiful. 
That was it. Thank you. Lucy. Uh, Rhoda, are you ready to go next? Yes, I can do that. Wonderful. Um, yeah, straight over to Rhoda then. Okay. I'll start with um, this one. It's called um, Imago, which means I think sort of being born um, into full maturity. And in that cocoon of imaginative play, I ducked and dove under the water's glutinous surface, turning upside down, my wings fluttering, my claws ready to pierce that shell inside which I floated. Before I knew you were there, before I knew what you were, before I knew I was there, before I knew anything. And in that cocoon of metamorphosis, in that amniotic fluid, green translucent light held me and I could see through veined skin a world from which you would, could appear to impinge on my silent evolution, my tentative pseudopodia retreating from your impending advance. A vital dance, a dance of vitality. I am alive and coming into being. No, do not stretch out towards me. I am not yet ready to open myself to your approach. I am not yet me, and you are not yet you in my awareness. Though soon I will break free, the chrysalis will crack. I am dormant no more. I am becoming, and you're... Oh, so tender movement, pressing me for a response. And in response, I turn upside down. I want to play, but she's coming up the stairs. My heart is thumping, my protrusions retract, my claws lie silent, quiescent, till she has passed by. My leaves quivering, my tiny filaments fluttering, buds closed tight. And yet, in this archaic space, this primordial sac, I grow restless, the juices quicken, the enzymes soften, the chrysalis cracks, exuvia fall away, thin scales of skin fragmented and discarded, and my wings hardening in the cool, warm air, imago born. And that place where I did not know who I was, or even that I was, nor that you were, that now is gone. And as I attach myself to a new harbour where your voice calls me, your inaudible decibels summon me and entice me, I hear you as if you have always been there. And the grief of absence, the grief that you were not there before. That I did not and could not yet know you. That grief quivers, retracts, lets go. And I fly towards your tender movement. That's that one. Thank you. Um, the next one is... Um, uh, as a, a, a trigger warning, um, it's um, um, it, it's based on a, a Christmas carol in the bleak, bleak midwinter. Some of you will recognise the last um, stanza of, of that poem by Christina Rossetti that was set to music. Um, but it's, it also came about from me being asked to give a talk um, on the sort of politics of abortion rights and made me think about why anybody would or would not um, need or want to have or not want to have an abortion. So there's that kind of issue in here. So it's called Poor Girl. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a rich girl, I would cook him lamb. If I were a clever girl, I would read my work. And yet, what can I give him? Sex, I cannot shirk. 
What can I do about it, poor as I am? If I were a rich girl, I would buy a pram. If I were a clever girl, I'd know when things would start. But what can I do to stop things falling apart? And what should he give me, as I am so poor? If I were a rich girl, he wouldn't show me the door. If I were a clever girl, I would make him pay. And yet, what can I do to make him stay? And what can I do about this from poverty? If I were a rich girl, I'd go to the city. If I were a clever girl, I could get a pill. It's hard to bear this. It's all uphill. And what can I give you? Poor as I am, can't buy you clothes or a woolly lamb. Can't keep you warm or safe from abuse. And though I'll plead and beg my pleas profuse, what can I do? They'll take you from me. I wish there was somewhere we could flee, and my heart will surely break in two, whichever way I say goodbye to you. And um, last one. Yeah, it's called um, Even If. Even if no one's there to hear your poem, even if you never win a prize, even if you long for love and all you get are lies, even if people look at you funny or worse, stare right through you, even if you miss the bus and want to cry and have no tissue, even if you work your whole life long and don't even own your home, even if you wanted a garden filled with birds and end up living by an aerodrome. Even if your partner has a go, over drunk or just aggressive, even if you want to shout, but can't be that expressive. Even if you try to argue your case and people are strong and beat you down. Even if you try to remember all you need and end up making extra trips to town, even if no one ever helps you and you have to do it all yourself. And even if the rain comes when out walking or you reach up to find there's nothing on the shelf. And even if it's hard to understand the lesson and hard to get a decent mark. Even if you invite people to a gathering but no one turns up to the park. Even if you lose your money or your phone. Even if your dog or cat gets ill. Even if it's hard to stay calm, your mind is racing when you want to be still. Use that anger. Use that grief. You share the experience of the oppressed. You think it's your fault. No wonder you're depressed. Give yourself a prize. Give yourself some love. Make a garden on the shelf, colourful and green. Savour your words, your feelings and your thoughts, because these are the truths that you at least have seen. Can't you see what's happening? Don't give up on hope, even though there's little time. Speak out what you have to say. Say something amazing. Aim for the sublime. Stay strong and keep going. Live for today, even when the cold is biting. And challenge inequality. And join with others. And go down fighting. Very powerful, very powerful indeed. And uh, as Lucy prompted, such wonderful imagery there. Um, very Thank you. beautiful language. Um, unfortunately, Erica doesn't seem to have managed to join us, um, which is probably because of the issues we've had with Zoom all night. Uh, if she does manage to join us, We'll put her on at the end. Until then, I guess it's just over to me to perform my two pieces. And the first one I'm going to read is uh, one of my very typical depressing pieces uh, with content warnings for uh, mental health and eating disorders in particular, uh, which I wrote yesterday while recovering from a dental procedure I had to go through because of my eating disorders. 
Um, and as always, I haven't even bothered to name it. So here we go. <laughs> when I was younger, I thought eating disorders were beautiful. A gift from the gods that offered the hope of a perfect square thigh gap and the beautiful sharp lines of hip bones beneath an eternally flat tum. I thought they were an answer to the misery of dysmorphia, a clever way to win the war I'd always waged with my own self image and a chance to finally look like the beautiful ephemeral girls who graced magazines with their wonderful willowy frames. I didn't see that this solution was naught but an illusion, didn't realize that the gods who offered this gift were truly tricksters who charged a high price for their gift. In seeing just the beauty in possibilities, I blinded myself to the ugly truths that lurked within those slender forms, seeing nothing of the fraying hair and the cracking nails, the teeth that broke as they were simultaneously starved of precious nutrients and assailed by tides of poison and bile as failing stomachs were purged of shameful feasts by dint of a finger shoved down my throat as I knelt beside a dirty stinking toilet bowl. I was ignorant to the agony that followed whenever you forced yourself to eat or the misery that engulfed you as you dragged yourself onto the bathroom scales for the third time that day, hoping that purging might have helped you shed that last half pound or the loathing you felt when you found it still there. I saw none of these things, for I was blinded by the beauty I hoped to steal. And so I told myself that this disorder was beautiful, when in truth, it was anything but. And that's my first one. Um, Erica's interested. Okay. Uh, Erica may be trying to join us. We're not quite sure what's happening there. Um, but while Chris deals with that off camera, I'll move on to my second piece, which uh, a little bit less depressing. Um, in the spirit of Cyberpunk 2077, being released just a couple of days ago. Um, I'm a staunch adherent of beliefs in transhumanism. And so every now and then I write a piece linked into that sort of mindset and mentality. So uh, once again, haven't got a name for it. <laughs> I yearn for the day when we can be liberated from the confines of this fleshy form, this prison of blood and bone constructed by nature and laced with errors and faults which render us hopelessly vulnerable and inflicted with maladies, physical, mental and emotional that deliver us such wretched misery. I dream of a day when we can upload our souls into the endless infinity of a digital world, becoming a ghost formed of ones and zeros, shaping our forms to our whims by making bits and bytes dance through our ethereal avatars and freeing ourselves from the predations of age and disease and decay 
offering the infirm and the meek the chance to waltz through a paradise of cyberspace, a digital heaven. Thank you. Um, have we heard from Erica? No. no. Yes, I have, have. I've just had oh. a message. I just put it up there. She just had said, are you coming? And she's messaged me no. Okay, so uh, I guess we'll leave on that one. I'll check in with Erica in a little bit just to make sure she's doing okay. Um, thank you all for coming. Uh, apologies for all the technical issues we've had again. Um, I really need to learn to start trying to set these up more than half hour before. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much. Uh, there have been some wonderful incredible and really emotional performances here it's been wonderful to hear them all kath really great to hear you singing again yeah. and um yeah i'm i'm sure we'll keep running these in the new year what with the restrictions that have been announced now for the spring and um well all i can say is i hope to see you all in the flesh at some point soon rather than being kept in this lockdown prison but thank you all again have a happy holidays uh and merry whatever you celebrate look after yourselves be kind to yourselves love you all good night thank, thank you sarah, sarah. Good, night. good night thanks happy everyone. christmas thank you bye bye bye, happy holidays. bye.